Hi guys, today we're going to look at bar charts in our previous we looked at histograms and had an overview of ggplot2. So, bar charts in R. First of all, what we need to do, if you remember from the others, is import the library ggplot2. Let's run that so it's in my console window there. This time we're going to uh, import some external data as uh, shown in the data management section. What we're going to use is um, employed students or employed people who were previously students, what student level they are, so what education level they are, and their current IQ and income. So, um, first of all, we need to tell R where that data is located. So it's in my um, video tutorials folder, but it can be completely, it could be located in any file or directory whatsoever. So what I'm going to do here is right click on the address line and put copy address as text. So I'm going to add a variable path, I'm going to open quotes, and weirdly enough to make R read it correctly you need to change all your backslashes to forward slashes. I don't know why this is a bug but it is. Okay, just put one at the end as well. So that will read the path. So the path will be in the environment window now. Now what we're going to do is file name, go to FN, and the FN is this. So I'm just going to click on that and copy. And then I'm going to put at the end, because it's CSV format, that's going to be those two. They're both in memory now. Then we're going to create a full path or an FP, we'll call it. So we're going to use the paste function to add path to file name with no separator. Oops, equal to nothing. So full path. If I print out my full path, yeah, that's going to read fine. So now I'm going to use the read or CSV command. Don't worry, I'll make this file available on the uh, Hudson's Hack website and on the YouTube page so you can download and use it in your uh, directory to uh, follow follow along. So in the read CSV section we're going to specify the full path. There's a few other options. We're going to specify if we specified header equals true, which we know it is, the, the data's got headers in it, so if we set that header equals T or true. I just use T. So now I'll read those. Yep, that's been added to the header levels. We're going to create that now as a data frame. We're going to call it student IQ, something like that. Again, this is made up values. They've been randomized, so the distribution will look strange. But yeah, essentially, that gives you the level of student, whether they're post grad, undergrad, college level, what the current income is what the current IQ is and what their sex is. From there we're going to check the structure of that data frame, student IQ, to make sure all the data types are correct. So we'd expect the student level to be a factor, there's three factors, college, postgrad and undergrad. Income should be an integer, IQ should be an integer, and sex should be a factor of two levels, that's great. So we've got the data now at hand. So what we're going to do is create the bar chart. First of all, we're going to create the, if we remember from previously, the data and aesthetics layer. So we're going to use this ggplot. We're going to pass in the data equal to student IQ. We're going to specify the aesthetics layer, open and close parentheses x equals and we're going to do student IQ do you want to break it down by the level okay so in there that's going to create me the um, data and NES layer as a list in memory now what I'm going to do is create the geom layer as a variable geom layer what I'm going to now do is pass in the previous variable was just created, data in AES, AES layer, plus my geom bar, which is the geometry. 
Finally, because those two have been stored in memory, because they've both been allocated to the placeholder, so basically look for this um, placeholder or variable uh, declaration um, character, special character. They've gone into memory, so what I need to do now is print that out. Geom layer. It's there, look. It's my variable. That part. So I print that now. My package shows that I've actually got, well, it's more or less equal, isn't it? We've got equal observations for each of those students at the relevant levels. So check sex. So I missed a parentheses off the end there. If I change it to sex, yeah, that's equal as well because they've been equally sampled. If I change it to IQ, we'd expect all sorts of different values there. But obviously, because it's um, normally bar charts are used to group categorical data. We're going to use the sex as the indicator. As we've got an equal level of samples, that, that doesn't really matter. We could change a few fewer of those samples in the data. But this is just to illustrate how you'd use and create that bar chart. So essentially, we've created the data in AES layer. We've used a ggplot function, passed the data in, specified an aesthetics layer, which is equal, equal to the sex of the student. The GM layer has been created as a bar chart, and then we've printed that out to the console window, that variable there. One thing to note that could enhance this here is I could use the attach command, which attaches the data so you don't have to actually specify which data frame it belongs to here. You could just specify sex. So an example of that, so if I attach my student IQ, I can get rid of this part of it on the AES layer and it'll still work. Okay, that still works. And it's also changed the label to sex. Just something to bear in mind if you don't want to uh, actually have to reference the data frame followed by the column name. If I wanted to, because currently this is just a count of the frequency of uh, how many times female appears in the data and how many times male compares in the data. If we wanted to then look at their IQ levels, um, we'd have to specify a Y variable. And I'll show you how what happens in a second. So I'm still going to use the dollar notation because I prefer that to um, highlight columns. Oops. Yeah. So if I looked at their IQ on the Y, I ran this now. It will probably it's going to fail. So what it says now is the stat count must be used with a Y aesthetic. So what you need to do in the geometry layer, now I've added that Y variable, which is the student IQ, there's a special um, identifier in R to count relative to a value that you specify. So it's called stat is equal to identity. So it basically means I identify whatever value I've got in my Y axis, which is the IQ value, and use that as the stat to um, sum as opposed to a count of the frequency. So now that changes the bar chart to their relative IQ levels. So you can see that's changed. Before we had an equal observation, an equal level of observations, both set around, I mean, how big is the data set? That's a lot. Uh, it's 36 observations. So yeah, set around about 18 each. Now we've got probably 18, 17, something like that. So it's basically indicating that we've got females with a higher uh, cumulative IQ than males. But without, well, without specifying that stat equal to identity, you wouldn't be able to use the IQ to uh, on the Y axis. So that's important to remember. If you just want to count frequency, so how many how many males we've got in the data, how many females we've got in the data, you can exclude this Y variable here. But if you want to do it by another another 
item in the data set which is the IQ level by the sex you must supply the Y variable and you must in the geometry layer make sure you I don't know what I've done there <laughs> you must make sure that that also stat is equal to the identity you can also look in the help and that will also highlight this issue so help equals jam bar so bar charts so it'll give you the example of using that as well but actually you can also look at the GM bar yeah so that's just something to bear in mind I can't find it now I thought I could but uh, I'm lying to you <laughs> but yeah trust me that if you want to count by the IQ then you need to make sure that the stat identity is in there anyway enough on that now what we're going to do is change some of the aesthetics Okay, to create a stacked bar then, what we're going to use is we're going to use the data in S layer, but we're going to create another geometry layer on top of that. So I'm going to call this um, my plot by education edu level. And we're going to use the previous data in AES layer that as I've just said. So I want to use the same data. I want to get rid of the y axis now. Just want to have a x axis is by the sex. I want to get rid of the identity as well there. No, I'm going to undo that. Back. Undo. I'll keep that for now because I'm not going to change this part. I'm going to add a, a new one. But in the data in AS layer, I just want to break it down by the sex. So now I'm going to add another geometry to it, geometry underscore bar, and then within that I'm going to add an aesthetics layer to the geometry. I'm going to equal the fill is equal to another item in my data. So we're going to use the we're going to use the data frame itself. I forgot what it's called. Uh, student IQ. Obviously my IQ is diminishing as we speak. Um, student IQ and the student level. So that will create a variable in memory again. We've got to now remember if we want to see the results of that, that we print it out or we by edu level. Okay. It, it appears I do need an Y aesthetic and there and this has got to be equal to my student level so now I'm going to change that at the top I could have just completely created another uh, so in the AS layer I need to set my Y equal to student IQ student level All right, sorry about that Okay, now if I use that line, right guys, ignore the uh, data and AS level for now. What I've done is created another level called the education level plot. I referred to again GG plot. My data is linked to student IQ. Sorry for that mishap. The AS on the x axis, so the aesthetics layer on the x axis, so what will be displayed at the bottom is the sex, so male, female. I then created another variable called plot and this time I'm adding what my data and aesthetics layer which is the data and education level plot. I'm creating a geometry layer which is the bar chart so which kind of geometry we want which is a bar chart. Within that I'm passing another aesthetics layer and I'm then, this is the important command, I'm using the fill equal to the level of the student, so whether they're undergrad, postgrad, or uh, at college. Then I'm printing out my plot. So if I run those three lines, you can see now we've got a nice stacked bar chart with uh, level, college level, they're all equal because the data's uh, completely made up. 
uh, if there are observations you see differences in the, the distribution and in the actual uh, banding widths but for now that's just to illustrate how you can stack a bar as well so to stack a bar you need to make sure in your geometry you've defined an aesthetics layer with a fill equal to another field in your data so it's got to be another factor level essentially so a, a descriptive layer so postgrad, undergrad, college and male, female they're my two um, factor levels in my data frame if I wanted to create a proportional bar chart so these the y-axis goes up to 100% so cumulatively how much does that add to that to that so how much of undergrad how much of a postgrad how much college they're all going to be about 33.33 percent because they're adding up to 100 um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy this I'm going to create a variable proportional stack bar I'm going to do everything's going to be number two print plot two and then in the student in the fill part here I'm going to add another variable in the aesthetics and I'm going to say position equals fill so what that says is fill the whole whole chart and make it a proportional bar chart so if I run these two lines now Sorry guys, another faux part. I'd actually added it to the data layer. What I need to do is add it to the geometry layer. And it's the geometry layer within the aesthetics parentheses. So it will be after this one here. It does take some getting used to of the structure and the hierarchy, but you'll become you'll become aware of it. So the fill of my geometries. So the position equals fill, that makes it a proportional bar, essentially. That's the special command to change it. So you can see, without that, it was just the, the values, the relative values on the y-axis. Now it's a proportional bar chart, so it's stacked, and it'll go up to 100% or 1.0. So you must remember to include this line in the aesthetics layer, in the geometry, that's important not in the data layer like the instructors has done <laughs> so with the variable plot 2 as you can see I've got it going um, horizontally sorry vertically if I want to make it horizontal I can add a command here so flip flip chart I'm going to call it so with my plot 2 which is the variable that I've just created. If I just add a variable on the end of it called co ord flip, so coordinates flip, run that, it gives me it on that axis, so it completely flips it around. So that's just something useful to uh, understand if you want to flip um, vertical bar charts and make them into horizontal. Okay, there's another something else that I need to show you if you want to let's go to the previous example they're stacked all throughout if I want to basically have college then postgrad then undergrad next to each other on the female axes and then the same on the male axes I need to use the um, something called dodge positioning in R it's not really a handy terminology but it basically adds these um, values next to each other on the relative into the relative y axes so female each one of these basically um, it's better to visualize it than keep talking about it so if I change the position here from the one that we've just defined from fill to dodge which is that th those three lines there and I run them as you can see that puts them side by side so that's that's something else that you can add in the aesthetics layer of the geometry to change how the visualization and how it's displayed. So just to recap what we've been over, we've created a path, so we've uh, imported external data. We've used the data set student IQ. 
we've um, created a data and aesthetics layer we've we've talked about if you want to uh, count by another item in your um, data set data set um, student level it was it was IQ before and you need to add the key command into your geometry equals stat equals identity and that will basically allow you to count by that if we can flip back to the chart that it relates to yeah so we counted by the student IQ but without using this special command stat identity that would have been possible so just remember that that's something that you need to remember as well as adding a Y um, axis to the aesthetics layer we then created a stacked bar we, we basically didn't use these uh, the geometries we created previously we created another layer another plot called education level plot we add a data layer which was equal to the student IQ data frame the aesthetics was linked to the sex so what was on the X axis we then plotted the education level and we used we used a fill by the student level and that's the relative chart there so education level was that part the geometry was the geometry bar we added an aesthetics layer we added fill to that based on the student level we then printed that out to the console window from that, so after doing that, we, we created a proportional stacked bar. We did the same, we did the same data layer again using the sex to break it down. Um, and then what we did is we changed the position to fill there. So we filled it, created a proportional bar chart as so. Then the last part we talked about, then, sorry, from that, we talked about flipping the chart using the code flip command then after that we talked about dodging so putting the um, the bars side by side so that's all done through using the position command in the geometry layer okay guys if you've got any questions please post them on my youtube page or on the Hudson's hacks page the um, supplementary material i.e. the uh, data file will be provided so you can follow along with this video I recommend that you just um, try that and anything that you need help on around some of the charting commands use the help functionality but I'm happy to answer any of your questions please subscribe hope you, uh, that was useful I'll see you again on the next tutorial thanks guys thanks for watching